Hi and welcome back to My Painting Journey. I'm Kara Clark and in this video I'm going to show you how to paint a Nazgul from Hunt for the Ring. So this is the one that we end up painting in the video. Um, he's done now. I should have done this before but I didn't. But it's fine. So here he is and we're just going to be going over basing and dry brushing again. Um, but one cool thing I want to show you is this paint that I used called Blackest Black by Stuart Semple. It's an incredibly dark matte black paint that I used on the inside of the Nazgul hoods to make them really, really dark so we get to see how that works. I hope you enjoy the tutorial and have fun watching. Here's our Nazgul, and as always, I've washed him and primed him with some black. And again, you don't want the primer to be in a thick coat because it'll just make the miniature flat again. And you want to give the paint something to grip onto, so thinner coats are better than thick coats. And also, these ones had colored bases, so I taped them up with painter's tape to keep their color because it's important for the gameplay. So the first thing I'm going to do is just paint the whole thing black. I've got my solid black here. I'm going to take the large flat brush, wet down the paint just a little, not a lot though. Just get it all over the miniature. It's really helpful to turn your miniature around and around like this when you're painting because then it helps you to get all the little cracks and crevices because sometimes if you hold it like you know if you hold it like this and you just paint what you can see you'll turn it while you're playing the game after you think you you're finished and you'll be like ooh what is that nasty spot and then you'll be self-conscious about it and your friends will point it out and they'll be like hey why didn't you get that and you'll be like oh i feel so ashamed so yeah save yourself from sh from shame and just turn it around and since the painter's tape is here i don't have to worry about getting colored paint on the base i can paint down as far as i want this I snagged this painter's tape from my dad's house. He is, he just lives down the street. He's a carpenter. He has all the tape and I didn't want to run to the store to buy six inches of tape. So I just snagged it from his drawer. Paint inside of his hood. Paint his knife. There we go. We will wait for him to dry. Oh, also, it's always really important, I found out, when you're done with a brush, just stick it in your water so that the paint doesn't dry on the bristles because that'll make them hard and it'll it'll ruin them. Here's our Nazgul, and he's got a really nice layer of black on him. And I'm going to show you this really cool paint that my brother let me borrow. It's called Blackest Black. It was on Kickstarter, and my brother got it, and he said I could try it out Ooh, on the Nazgul. So we're going to play with some paint today. Ooh, I can hear it squishing in there. Maybe we should shake it up some more. It's been sitting for a while, I think. That sounds a lot better. You can only shake your paint as long as you need to. I saw an Instagram post about a guy who used like a power drill to mix his paint. He did it for like six minutes. Ugh, there we go. That looks better. It's called Blackest Black. We're gonna see how black it actually is. So this is what I want in his hood. I'm gonna take my small Wargamer dry brush. Got a small flat end and it's a little wet, which is perfect for diluting the paint. I'm going to paint it into his hood. So I just got a little bit in his hood. And I'm going to wipe off my brush and then I'm just kind of going to drag it towards the edges. So it's darkest in the middle and lighter at the edges. I think I'm going to put it on his hands too. I'm going to wet it down a little bit more so that it more sinks into the cracks on his hands. That looks really good. Okay, we're gonna let it dry. Here he is. You can see in his hood that it's a little bit darker, but not as dark as I was expecting. So we're gonna go with another coat and fill it in his hood. And recoat his hands also. And we'll let that dry. All right, here he is. You can see he's definitely getting darker now in his hood and on his arms. So let's see. I'm gonna take just a little bit more and put it to where the very deepest part of his cloak would be. So just a little bit in the center. That'll help it to look like it's getting darker the deeper his hood goes. Okay, there we go. We'll dry it now. There he is, he's looking pretty good. Get him as close as I can. His 
arms are dark. His hood, you can definitely see that it looks lighter on the outside than it is on the inside. That will give us a good um, illusion that he, his hood just goes on forever. He has no face and no soul because he's a Nazgul. Okay, we're gonna apply a wash now to get in all the crevices. Shake that up. So, oh yeah, I have Citadel Nolan Oil. It's a black wash that I like. It's the only one I've tried. We're gonna take our Wargamer large dry brush. Again, I just like this one because it's big so it holds a lot of paint. It gets everywhere I need it to. We're just gonna brush across the cracks and get it on everything. Everything that we want dark, which for this guy is everything. Oops. These bases I don't think were meant to go into holders, but we're making it do that anyway. If you run out of um, paint in the top part of your pot, you can close it. Make sure that it's closed all the way before you shake it though. I learned that in the last video. It was unfortunate. Turning it all over, getting the wash in the under parts especially because those would be the most dark. Get it on his hand and his dagger. Might as well do the inside of his hood too, right? Can't hurt. A little bit more. He's gonna, he's gonna fall over. Nope, he's good. There we go. We'll let him let the wash dry and we'll come back to it. All right, here's our Nazgul and he's looking awesome. He's really dark all over. That wash dried nicely. And while the wash was drying, I took some time to look up who makes the blackest black paint. Stuart Semple. So if you want to look into that for yourself, he also has like a, a goldest gold, a silverous, silveriest silver, whitest white possibly. He's got a bunch. Okay. So we based, we did a wash. So now we're gonna do some dry brushing to add some highlights. We're gonna take our Tempest Gray. I like them a lot because they have the dropper in the top, which makes it so that you get a good, you don't overuse paint. It has a little dropper, so you use exactly the amount you want to use. So I did two drops of Tempest Gray and a drop of solid black. I'm gonna take the small dry brush. Oh, wait, you're supposed to mix it. Mix it with something else. So we get a nice deep, dark, dark gray. And actually, I'm not gonna take the small flat brush. I'm just gonna take this cheap Walmart brush that I have that has a flat top that's a little bit stiffer. Work it into the brush, and then you're gonna brush it off until you're almost getting nothing. But if you have too little, then it won't show up at all. And then you're just gonna drag it across the ridges to highlight them in a really easy way. I'm gonna start for the for his hood, I'm gonna start at the edge and pull back so that it's lightest around the edge of the hood. And that'll help the inside of the hood to look even darker. Let's see, I'm gonna switch to this. It's a vehicle terrain brush, but it's got a really stiff top. I'm gonna switch to that. Get it on his hands a little bit to bring out like his knuckles and finger bones. Dragging it across the ridges. Okay, and dry brushing dries pretty quickly, so we don't really need to wait for our layer to dry before we go on to the next, because it, I mean, that's why it's called dry brushing, because it's dry. I'm gonna take a pure white and add it to that dry brushing color that I had. Just a couple of drops to lighten it up. When I do wispy dry brushing on ghosts and reapers and stuff like that, I like to add a little bit of blade steel because it gives it a little bit of shimmer around the edges. Brush it off and drag it across. This time I'm going to focus mo mostly towards the top of his body so that it gets lighter as we move toward the top. And again, pulling away from the hood. So the edges of the hood are lightest, which will make the inside look darker. The harder you push when you dry brush, the more paint will stick. So if you want a higher concentration of color on one part, push harder there. And then if you want less, push lighter. Add just a little to his chest. I'm going to go back over his hands though. And his dagger. I'm gonna go on the tips of his cloak. I'm gonna try to get those really well. But the parts that are underneath here, 
not going to work on as much because they, if they look shaded, it'll give a better visual effect. Here he is now. He's got some good dry brushing, making um, parts of him lighter. But you can also see his hood is still really dark, and he's starting to get darker the further we go down toward his little Nazgul waist. Let's go a little bit lighter. Add another bit of white. Two more drops of pure white. Mix it until it looks like one solid color. You don't want like streaks coming through because that means it's not mixed well enough. We're going to do some more dry brushing. And this time I'm just doing it on the, the very tops of him, like his shoulders and his hood. We'll go again over the hands and the dagger. And on the tips of his cloak. So there, there. All right, here he is. He's looking really good, really nice. We're gonna do one more. This time I'm just gonna go with straight white, I think. Load up my brush. I'm not going around the whole hood this time, just towards the top. Just on his shoulders. And on the, the ends of his cloak. And a little bit on his hands. To really bring out those, those bones. And yeah, might as well get the dagger too. Bring out the design on the handle. There we go. He looks great. Now, since the edges of his hood are lighter, his face looks really dark. I've brought out the design on the handle on his dagger here. You can see the bones in his hands really nice. I'm going to add a little bit of probably just some dry brushing to the blade of his dagger to make it look shiny. So I'm going to start dry brushing towards the end because that's where I want the most light. Back and forth really quick. And I just used our silvery, um, the last dry brush color that we did before we moved on to white. Back and forth, you want to get the top too, turning your miniature all around. Be gentle though, because I can see it's starting to kind of bend and I don't want it to break. Right here on his sleeve, I can see that there's this ridge here. That would look really nice with some highlight on it to kind of define his sleeve a little better. I'm just going to work that same blade color across his sleeve, bring out the edge of his sleeve. So you can see that he has like an armhole there. And then, because some of the dry brushing got on it, I'm gonna take our Wargamer Insane Detail brush and just dip it in that blackest black and work it through the sleeve hole. That'll help it to look really deep and dark inside. And put a little more in his hood because why not? Especially toward the very center where his face would be. All right, we'll let that dry and then I'll show you what he looks like when he's dry. Okay, here he is. He looks great. I'll turn him for you so you can see. All of his ridges are highlighted. His hood looks really nice. His face is all dark. His dagger looks great. Everything looks awesome. And one thing that I forgot to mention was that the primer that I used was this Army Painter black primer. And you can also use like any kind of black primer that bonds to plastic. You can find, I used to use a Walmart Rust-Oleum brand, which was good. The Army Painter, I've noticed when you spray it, it goes on in finer layers, which probably helps not cover up so much detail. So that's what's nice about these. But you can use stuff from, you know, any kind of hardware store. And then now that he's finished, and before I take the tape off, I'm going to finish him with a finishing spray. So you can use, this is a, this is Rust-Oleum. This is a semi-gloss, which means it'll have a little bit of a shine to it. And if you don't want shine, which with these high pigmented paints, I don't really like a lot of shine, you can use a matte instead. And this is still just the Rust-Oleum. You can find it at Walmart or just any hardware stores. As long as it bonds to plastic, you'll be fine. So I'm gonna finish him with the matte clear and then I'll be able to take the tape off and he'll be done. So that was a little bit of, a little bit more of basing and washing and dry brushing and we got to try out this fun blackest black which show you his hood again it is quite dark it's impressive i like it a lot so that's it for our nazgul he turned out really great he's got the finish on now and i took the paint off of his base 
Since we use the painter's tape, it's got a nice line right there. There's no overlapping between the paint and the base. It looks great. The shading turned out really well, and the matte finish had a little bit of a gloss, but nothing too drastic. I hope that you had fun watching, and thanks for joining me on my journey.